Hey, residents of Meeple Town. Today we are playing Pendulum. On a pendulum. Where we are nobles vying to become the next king of all the land in this real time one to five player game. Let's get to the table and check out Pendulum. All right, here is the setup for Pendulum, and there's a lot going on here, but I'm not gonna go over all these different spots. These, this it's not is, that much, Dean. No, but it looks like a lot. So this is a worker placement game. You've got three different sections of the board for worker placement. You've got this one that has a three minute timer, this one that has the two minute timer, and this has the 45 second timer. If you look on these spaces, you will see that there's these ones that are empty. You can place workers there. There are some restrictions though. If there is a different colored worker, I'm the red player, John's the blue player. And then we have in the two player game, you have to put these random workers in the small squares. I cannot place one of my small workers in this spot. This has to be placed in a spot on its own except in this section. It can, you can put as many as you want in there. And then the grande workers, are your, you're allowed to place those in any of the spots. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to move up on these tracks. And when we get all of our uh, tracks move up to this part of the board, you are declared the winner at the end of the game, unless multiple players are in that spot and then you figure out the highest score. You also have to get the gray over here, which means you have to take that at some point. Right, you're gonna have to be able to get this legendary achievement is what mm -hmm. that's called. There's also one more part that I'll talk about real briefly. These are the different land cards. This is where engine building comes into play. If you take the action to take one of those cards, you're gonna take a card and put it underneath your board in the correct spot so that whenever you activate the different flags on the board, it will activate all of the cards that are in that But you can spot. only have two cards underneath you. That's right. You can have as many as you want, but at the end of the round when you Take have to out. reset, you're going to have to discard down to two. We also each have, and I'll just throw some of these up there, we also each have some of these stratagem cards. You can play these at any time, um, and they are going to give you benefits right away, and then you can pay culture which is this blue resource, five of those to gain all of your cards back. So you can keep playing these throughout the game, but you're gonna have to be able to pay the culture to get those back. Let's Ready? do it, baby. Is that simple enough? We are going to do this real time right off the bat. Um, we'll, we'll see how this goes with the live camera. Have you got the lights action. and the cameras on and real time? Dean, this is serious this business. This is a lot going on. It is a lot going on. This round's gonna go until we kick all the little timers That's off. That's right, yeah, there's three on there. Once, So essentially it's gonna play about six minutes long is, is what each round plays and there's four rounds. Did you tell them how the timers work? I don't think we did. At did the very we? beginning, we're going to flip those over. After a timer runs out, when somebody notices it, they flip it back over. And now, you, you don't have to right away. You can That could be a, a delay mechanism. That's right. And you can that's only do actions when the timer is on your spot here. That's right. But you cannot move your workers unless there's no timer there. That's right. It's a key part of the game and actually has this little card as a reminder. But basically, this just tells you that if the timer is in a row, you cannot place or take away a worker. If it's not, then you can. You can move them around as much as you want as long as there's not a timer in that spot. That's a key part of the game. That's right. Ready to just jump into it? Let's go, baby. All right, so at the beginning, all we're gonna do is just flip these timers over. And we have already placed workers into we're those off, spots, baby. so immediately we're actually gonna be able to take actions here. So I'm going to, take whoopsie, knock the timer over right off the bat, mainly because of where I'm sitting. I'll pay two of the gold. This allows me to activate my red column, which is going to give me four military tokens to put here. I'm gonna go ahead and play my first card, which means I give up eight of any resource. One, two, three, four, five, six. The purple markers are Seven, voting eight. tokens. And- I get my extra worker, just like that, baby. I've got two. I know I'm about to get mine too soon, uh, hopefully. Let's see here. What do I wanna do next? Uh, I think I'm just gonna take <sighs> a- get resource Slowly. with this one a resource of any color i'm just going to take a culture token i believe and i could really go for that do that next and immediately you can boom uh, so now we can move these around that okay and yep there we go um so right now we're just kind of moving these guys around i'm going to take this action so i can go ahead and take this worker back i can do that one time but again i'll have to eventually pay place that for that me up on this track to put this here we do have to pay five of these blue intelligence. What is that, Dean? I can't, no, power, prestige. Prestige, and, that's right. Yeah. And then popularity is the yellow yeah. column of that one. As you can tell at the beginning of the game, there is some downtime. Like, so it's not an ultra frantic yep. game right now. Yeah, there is a decent amount of waiting, but while you're waiting, you're having to think through what your next moves are gonna be. And it's possible that you're for, you'll are you forget about workers that are on the board. Yeah. You start off with two, John's already got three. Yeah. Um, I'll have three soon. Nope, flip this one over. So now I can move this feller. Take these down. Or this here. lady. 
I'm Let's going see. to take a vote marker and then I'll also spend four military to take a land token as well. I think I'm going to, I really need to be able to move up on my yellow track. So I think that I'm gonna take this one. The yellow, my popularity track is the one that's harder for me to move up on. So I want to have a little bit of an engine so I can move up on that track a little bit more. Um, and then I'll immediately spend uh, my three vote tokens to gain another worker, and I'll put That's this. That's good. It helps me make my decision a little bit faster. Here, go ahead. Vote, vote tokens will help determine the player order later on in the game. Right now, it's mostly Hold up. As a, doing? kind of as a resource if it benefits you. Did I place in the wrong? I placed that in the wrong. Ted gummit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I placed one where the timer was so that I can't use it. So I just wasted that worker for two minutes. And Not that really definitely can happen. Oh my gosh. That right. was so stupid. I'm going to get another vote marker. Oh my gosh. I needed that. And I'm going to go ahead and go here to get ready to be able to move up on my yellow track. I'll also need some more money soon, so. Let's see. That's all right, I'm good with what I've got. All right. So and again, I'm looking at my cards. Oh, I did play this card earlier to take my extra worker. So right now I don't have any stratagem cards. And we've got about three more minutes in this round. Is get that right? Of those. Yeah, so I'm gonna do that, get five of these. And you can see us as we're taking the actions, we're taking the, the meeples and moving them down. You move them down, if there's a cost here, you pay the cost to be able to take that. So I'll move this down and then take the resource. Um, and this one, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just place this up here to get some... Mm, I think that's what I wanna do. That's probably a bad move, but I need to be able to get some more voting tokens. Mm. I'm gonna go ahead and place this, which means I can take this worker back, and I'm gonna place this worker. Actually, I'm gonna uh, since I've not played this one, I can immediately go ahead yeah, and take that out of there. there. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Dean. And that benefited John. Yeah. Partly what I'm thinking. Okay, so we have this this extra player here that's gonna determine player order. He already has. Um, three vote markers with him. I didn't put them on the board, but usually do that as a reminder. So if you want to beat that player out, you're gonna to have to get more vote tokens than them to be able to move up on the track. So that is what I'm gonna to try to do. I also need some money, so I'm just gonna place that right here. And we wait for the sands of time. That's right. To unravel. <laughs> oh boy, okay, I'll let you do it. I don't, that's not gonna benefit me at all, so. I'm take this guy off right off the rip down there. I'm gonna do that and run. And now John has to pay two dollar two gold to be able to take that action. But let's say John doesn't have that gold. He doesn't have to take the action as soon as that flips over. If it's gonna benefit him to take this action to um, to activate his gold flag there, he can do that. You can delay, but again, there's that timing element. So this one flipped over. Go ahead and take another one of these, and I'm definitely going to want something up here. So I'm just going to place this. I here. didn't build any of my engine this round, but this probably will not activate right now. But that's okay. I was tempted to do it right here, but I just want to go ahead and grab some gold. You know, once in this, I might totally be... wasn't even paying attention to that this time. Were you? Oh. <laughs> That was terrible, but no, I did not. I've, dude, I don't have so, any resources. Oh my gosh, I'm one away. Oh wait, dude. Oh man, look at that. Boom, get the resource. You got it, there we Boom. go. Boom. Man, I could go. You have to. So in the first round of the two-player game, you cannot claim the legendary yeah. token, so which that's, that's huge be to be able to move up. And actually you do that right, right away. away. So go ahead I? and move up in all three of those tracks. Whoo, where are you at? And where are Dini at? Done. I can go ahead and take this and take my to this is going to be over it's so. about to be yep i think i'll do this and leave that there that this won't matter probably because that's going to end boom immediately i can pay two and i will move up on my i'm not quite sure why i took that action i think i'm going to take <laughs> the I yellow like it when you say stuff like that i don't need that extra voting token but i'm going to do that anyway i'll move up yellow blue and then immediately I'll get a vote token. So what we do now is we're gonna to go to the council phase. This is the end of this part of the game. This is four round games. So we're already a quarter of the way through kind of. Um, so in the council phase, 
first we're going to set the order of your um, dude. Look at those votes. resources that you're going Holy to get. Holy smokes! And I already had three that I spent. I know. That's yeah. what I was so surprised because I, I, I thought I was going to beat you for sure because of that. I spent most of my time doing this to guarantee that I would get this. So what we're going to do is get, we're going to compare. So I have a total of six I of the four. vote tokens. I'm going to stay in first place. John did beat out the third player. Now, if John only had three, these actually would have yeah. switched out. So you, you need to have more. A stack of three next to him if you want to remember that. That's right. Um, you need to have more than that player if you can possibly do that. So right now we're going to take the benefit. We'll take the um, uh, the reward card that we want of mm -hmm. our choice. And for me, I don't know what I want. Getting vote tokens is really good for me. So I kind of think I'm going to... Mm, that's a tough one. Uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this vote token, and this one is going to go into my stratagem hand, and so I'll be able to continue to play this later throughout the game if I want. The ones that have that symbol, I'll show you that, that have that sun symbol on there are the ones that you'll be able to take throughout the game. The ones that have the lightning bolt are ones you take right away, and then always you're going to have the one where you can choose a track to move up on or switch out one of your workers for a grande worker. So I'm choosing this so that I can run this engine so that I can get four more of these. That way, next round, I already have enough of these military points to get two engine builds. Which is really nice. So. Yeah, that's that's huge. All right, next thing we're going to do. Um, so we've done that. We've gained our reward. We're also going to move up on tracks. For me, I get to move up on any two tracks that I want to. And I think what I'll do, I think I'll be able to move up on my yellow track fairly well. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move up on my yellow and my red. Um <laughs> I mean, I don't need, need to move up two on my yellow is what I was saying. Oh, oh. Yeah. I, I thought about moving up two here, but I think I've got a little bit of a yellow engine. you used engine. the wrong color. No, no. I just, I didn't want to move up two because I think I can do it later. Yeah, I think I can because of this. There's two spots to go up two immediately there, which is nice. So I'm actually going to hold off on my yellow as well. Go up blue. And there we go. Okay, now you don't... The, the things that you reset, and I'll just kind of talk through this. You're going to reset all these cards. And four new cards will come out. A new card will come out here for the achievement. John's going to get this token back. And then... Take those off. And then all of those will reset. This is actually the timer of the game. So once all these cards get... Um, taken or not taken, but once you've had them all out displayed onto the board, then that will trigger the end of the game. That last round, all those cards are always the same because they're always moving up on these tracks. Yeah. Um, then we'll be able to move these workers around if we want to. If we, if you're able to, before you flip them over, you can move those around, and then you flip over the timers, and then you start the whole thing over again. There now, it is. That is. That's it. So let's go ahead and talk about the art and components. Art and components. What do you think, Danny? I will say that um, there's not a whole lot of like beautiful art in this game. The box, I think, is really well done. I love the look of the box mm -hmm. cover. Um, I think the character art looks really cool. But then when you look at the board, the art isn't the thing that like grabs me the most. The graphic design, however, I think is really well laid out. Mm -hmm. Like everything seems to be very clear. You know Super where I can place workers. You know how much it's going to cost. You know what you're going to gain, and it has to be because again, it's real time. And if it's not clear, you're going to be like, you know, freaking out trying to figure out what does what. Totally agree. I do really like the character art though on all the player boards. I think those are really neat. Yeah, but I agree with you about this. This doesn't blow my mind like visually, but. Man, graphically, it's super clear. And I think the iconography is very, I mean, really easy to understand in this game. Yeah. Now, a huge negative that great. John and I have. This yeah. is a very, very big negative, and it needs to be fixed if it's not already. In our copy of the game, especially with the two-minute timer and sometimes with a three-minute timer, you flip it over and no sand's coming out. It's stuck. And because it's real time... You might not notice for a while, and you're like, That's "Well, when did I flip that over?" Times, yeah. yeah. Now it didn't happen in this round, and I think, okay, I don't know if this is the case. It could be just getting through. I mean, I played, I don't know, seven games of this now. I think seven or eight games of this, and it did not happen this round, and it happened one time the last game. So it could be that it's working its kinks out on its own. I have no idea. Sands just it's polishing itself. Could be off the hard edges. But if not, that's a big no-no in yeah. a real-time game where you can't. You can't be focusing on those timers and if they're working or not. And these are uh, cool looking, but the bases aren't very aren't very wide, so you can they can get tipped over yeah. relatively <laughs> easy. So I think I would have maybe rather gone for function with a little bit wider base over the way it looks, but 
it's not terrible. And we haven't knocked it over too much. I did in this game. Part of it is because of the place I'm sitting, I'm sitting between you this did, screen yeah. and that screen. But we do though. We have knocked it over. Sure, I mean, it's still yeah. wobbling there. It was yeah. a little. So I, I and kinda... more players, the more possibility you're going to knock that over. Yep, for sure. Gameplay. What do you think? So. I'm not a huge real-time game fan. Um, I'm, I'm not opposed to real-time games. They're just generally not my favorite. So I wasn't super excited about this game. Just to be real right off the bat, like I was just like, okay, um, Dean and I, we argue over Stonemaier games a lot, but we didn't argue over this one. He wanted it. I didn't even... No fighting. Did, no fighting at all. I didn't even, didn't care at all. Um, but this game is not bad for a real-time game, Dean. It's really not. What the, the My favorite part of this game is the way the timing mechanism works. I think it's awesome. You have a three minute timer, as Dean said earlier, a two minute timer, a 45 second timer, and the way that you're moving your workers really matters. Like you can get them stuck here wherever, I could have maybe done two actions here before I even went here, before this timer ran out. Mm -hmm. And so I noticed that in the first time I ever played this game, I was making some mistakes like that. I was so excited to go to a spot. But here's the thing that I like about the game. If I'm deciding to, I'm just moving that. If I decide, well, I think I can get two of these actions in before this, but Dean goes like that, then I can't take my action. Right. So there's this push your luck element to that. Um, and, and I feel like you're constantly trying to squeeze things in window, tight windows in this game. Like, okay. But then I also like how it really, to me, doesn't feel as frantic as a lot of other real-time games yeah. that I've played. Mm -hmm. Because you have the timers that slow you down. Yeah. I think that's actually really smart and my favorite part. Even more, I like engine building, but that's my favorite part of the game, actually. Yeah, now one thing we didn't mention is you do have this, yes. this uh, timer track that you can use uh, if you don't want to play the real-time game. What I've noticed, and they actually recommend that in your first game of playing this, what I've noticed is that when you use that time tracker, you tend to play pretty much as fast as, we, as you would in the normal game, but, it, but it's... It doesn't have that same like stressful feeling that you might have with just having timers yeah. on the board. I don't think that's the way to play. Playing this game yeah. with the timers is the way to play. That's look for someone who's not real time. I thought I heard many several people say, "Well, they have this non real time version." And when we were playing that, we played one round of that, Dean, and I was like, "Just play the real time." Like I just yeah. felt like this was a real time game, and it just wasn't. So if you don't like real time games and you think that's going to change the th change everything. Maybe it does for you. I doubt it. Yeah. I really doubt it. Yeah, and it's interesting because it's still a turnless play playing game, right? You, sure. like, you don't have turns even in the even with that time tracker, you're still placing things at the same time. Now what happens is, let's say it, and this goes in, in both versions of the game. Let's say John and I are reaching for the spot at the same time. That's when this time uh, this turn order, I forget the name, uh, a privilege, the privilege order comes into play. So if I have a higher privilege, that means I get priority to be able to place my worker if that matters. Now, there's also yeah. a little bit of a, there's some uh, ambiguity maybe, in, not not ambiguity in the rule book, but how that works and how you play as a, as a group. You might say, like, we're hardcore. If I'm there first, it's mine. But what the rule book suggests is saying that if you're kind of within a few seconds of each other reaching up there, then you look at the privilege order. So there's no, like, frantic like, fighting over spots. Yeah, and I think like that's interesting. Drop it real quick before somebody else or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Because that's when vote tokens come into, come into play quite a bit. Yeah. I, for me, I really enjoy games where you're moving up on tracks. Um, Sorcerer City is a real-time game where you do that, and I like quite like you that like the one. The sense of accomplishment you're getting, huh? Yeah, yeah. It just feels good that you're you're moving up on those tracks. Now, this one is a little more unique because it's not just like I need to move up on these tracks to get more points. You have to. Like you have to move all yeah, of you, your, or you lose, or you lose the game. You will not win. Now, if neither one of you do, then that's a possibility that you would look at the scores yeah. and. And then you look at your lowest track to determine what your score is going to be, which is interesting. But the part of that that makes it really interesting is you have four rounds in this game. You need to be able to move up into your uh, on your legendary track, yeah. right? And th this is how you get it. So you have to meet these qualifications to be able to... Uh, you have to get all of these things to be able to place your marker in here and then be able to gain the reward that's at, that's at the bottom or take that legendary token which lets you move over and if you never do you lose so you have to do this at least one time during the and game and only one person each turn can get it that's right that's so right so dean i don't wait till the last and then dean gets it then i lose the game yeah in a two-player game uh maybe a three-player at least a two-player game also this is not here at the start of the game so the first round you can't get that legendary 
achievement, you have to wait to the second round or later, which is, again, an interesting mechanism yeah, in the game. I think so. Yep. Final thoughts? Yeah, well, I was going to say first before okay. final thoughts that there are two sides to these boards. Oh, yes. Uh, so there's an advanced side, which I think are more interesting. Um, here, let's just <laughs> get it out of here. Why don't you just put that on up there? So it, it's a little <laughs> it bit more interesting. There, but... And then, oh, yeah, because oh. we've got it zoomed out. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> so you can see that it is a little bit different on the bottom of the board, but also your cards are different. So the cards that you get, are they're a little more interesting. They're a little more, maybe point you in a direction, maybe could be more difficult to use, potentially. Um, I like the advanced side much better. I think that's actually really, really cool that they have advanced sides to every board. Yeah. Yep. So I agree thoughts. with that. So final thoughts. Um, I do like real-time games. I'm not. I'm definitely not opposed to them. I think they can be fun. However, when I think about like a real-time Euro, yeah. that makes me a little bit nervous. But having mm. played Sorcerer City, and it was one that I was pleasantly surprised, really enjoyed that one. Um, I also was pleasantly surprised with this one. I, I didn't have super high expectations because, because of the real-time element and just like the simplicity of the worker placement because it is a pretty simple worker placement. Very all simple. of these spots at the bottom here are the same as these. I didn't mention this. All of these are the same as up here. They're a little bit different in those boxes. That changes it up. And then the same on the three-minute timer spot as well. That made me a little bit nervous, but then you play the game and it is a ton of fun. And it's not like it's it's tense and it maybe even stressful might be the right word, but it's not frantic. It can be in the way it, it's tense. I'll say that because I think it can get frantic at the end when you have a lot of um, workers and you realize you're losing. Yeah, <laughs> but you're not like I don't have to hurry up and move these around. Like that's not where the your speed brain comes into place. Me. It's your brain. That's right. And if they're all locked into place and you can't move them and you can't get a card, you can hose yourself in this game. You definitely can, but that's what you have to plan out really well. So anyway, all that to say, I was surprised. I really enjoyed this game quite a bit. I think I prefer Sorcerer City at this point just a little bit better. It's a little more unique for me, but I still really enjoy it. I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. Wow. Really, really enjoy this one. That one could rise up, even though I've played this a ton. My my reservation of this is the potential sameness of it. You know, like it mm -hmm. can get... It could get samey over time, but having the different size you've boards explored the, changes that up a little bit. Yeah, I think that, that I think that's the one thing that really does help it is yeah. having the different side boards. And there's a decent amount of player characters um, to choose from as well. So I like that. Um, all right, so I wasn't super excited about this one. I wasn't unexcited. I just was kind of like, whatever, we'll play it and I'll see what I think about it. I like it. Uh, I like Pendulum. I like it probably more than I thought I would, but I also am not in love with the game. I think that it has the really interesting timer mechanic in this game. And I, I really do enjoy that, making those decisions, not getting hosed by getting too many players locked in uh, for a certain amount of time. I really like that. Um, yeah, I like the way that you do have some engine building, you know, that we mentioned down at the bottom of the board that when you're going exploring those territories or conquering those territories and you're getting those um, new rewards every time you go to the banners. I like that about the game uh, quite a bit. It's fun. So I'm giving this a seven out of 10. Um, I kind of wrestle between a six and a half and seven, but you know what? Seven means usually willing to play, and I think I am on yeah. this game. I think I'm usually willing to play. It, an eight means I would suggest it. I'm not going to suggest it. I'm probably not going to say, hey, let's go play Pendulum. But if Dean says, you want to play it, most of the time I'm going to say, sure, because it's a fun game. I'm, you know, again, everything with a bit of a grain of salt because I'm not the biggest real-time game fan, but it's 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 a solid game. Yeah. Yep, that's a lot of fun. It's an eight from me. That's a seven from John. Yeah. Pretty high praises for a game. It is. That it's nothing. I'm going to go. Probably can be pretty divisive. I think. But. Yeah, it's nothing. I'm going to go pick up personally. That's just my <laughs> thing. You definitely would. For oh sure. yeah. Yeah. Um, I I wouldn't pick up personally, but I, I still think it's it's a little better than I thought it would be. This will stay in the collection for sure. Why don't you tell people how they can get in touch with us? If you're enjoying our channel, we would love for you to subscribe to our channel. And you can go to MeepleTownGames.com to check out most of our most all of our stuff. We're at Meeple Town Games on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we're Board Game Geek Guild 340. Seven. Thanks for coming down to Meeple Town. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at Meeple Town Games, and connect with us on the Meeple Town Guild, Guild Number Thirty Four Hundred Seven, at BoardGameGeek.com, and also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meeple Town.